welcome back to my channel just in case you don't know who i am i'm katie but you can also call me dinky and welcome to the world of dinky and now in today's video i'm going to be carrying on with the true crime mini series and today's focus is dr harold shipman have you heard of him and then if not where have you been you may not not have heard of him if you're not from the uk and if you want to learn all about him then please do stay to the end and don't forget to give it a big thumbs up at the end if you enjoy this video and it shows that i'm producing what people would see and it's just nice to have that support and if you're new to my channel then don't forget to click on the subscribe button at the end or now whichever i don't mind just as long as you subscribe and uh, that would be amazing you can join the world of dinky with me and everybody else so, Dr. Howell Shipman, or it was also known as Dr. Death, and he was born on the 13th of January 1946. And he was the second of third children, three children by Howell Shipman and Fira Britton. His parents were devout Methodists, and Howell Shipman Jr. actually grew up on a council estate. So it was quite a modest childhood, really. There don't seem to be any major issues, as far as I'm aware. And growing up, Shipman was an accomplished rugby player in the youth leagues. And he passed the 11 plus exams and he went to his local grammar school. He did it so as a distance runner during his final year at school. And he served as vice captain of the athletics team. Shipman was close to his mother who died of lung cancer when he was just 17 years old. Her death came in a manner similar to what later became his own modus operandi in the later stages of the disease. She had morphine administered to her by the doctors at home. And he witnessed his mother's pain subside despite her terminal cancer until her death. So he would watch his mother, Vera, sitting in her chair while the doctor injected the morphine, you know, which was a pain reliever. And this is, will be questions that I will be asking at the end. Shipman had then met Primrose and they married. And it was a small ceremony. And I think her parents opposed to him. I don't think they were keen on him. But together they had four children. Shipman studied medicine at Lee's School of Medicine and he graduated in 1970. But he, this was his second time in trying to get into medical school because the first time he just wasn't good enough. So he tried again and he got in. And then he began to work at the Pontefract General Infirmary and this was West Riding of Yorkshire. In 1974, Shipman took his first position as general practitioner at the Abraham Armourod Medical Centre in Todmorden. The following year, he was caught forging prescriptions of pepidine, which is also known as Demerol, for his own use. So he developed a drug cap, drug addiction and he was fined £600 and then he briefly attended a drugs rehabilitation clinic which was held in York but the General Medical Council didn't strike him off or anything he just left him and naturally he then became a GP at the Donnybrook Medical Centre in Hyde near Manchester in 1977 Shipman continued, continued working as a GP in Hyde throughout the 1980s. In 1983, he started his own surgery, so he was working by himself at 21 Market Street, and he became a respected member of the community. But back in 1983, he was interviewed in an edition of what the Granada television show documentary world and action 
on how the mentally ill should be treated in the community. But after his conviction later on in life, this interview was rebroadcasted on the Trevor McDonald Tonight programme. Hopefully you should be able to look that up on YouTube if you want to check that out. Trevor McDonald is an amazing broadcaster. He, I think he was the first black man to present the news. Yeah, do check him out. In March 1998, Lyndon Reynolds of the Donnybrook Surgery in High, which was situated opposite the surgery that Shipman would be working at, and often they would help each other out. And there's quite a few doctors in this surgery, and they all countersigned forms and things like that. And Lyndon was prompted by Deborah Massey, from Frank Massey and Sons Funeral Parlour and she expressed concerns to John Pollard, the coroner for the South Manchester district, district about the high death rates among Shipman's patients. She was particularly concerned about the large number of cremation forms for the elderly women that he needed countersigned the police were unable to find sufficient evidence to bring charges and the shipment inquiry later blamed the police for assigning inexperienced police officers to the case. Between 17 and April 1998 and when the police between 17th April 1998 when the police abandoned the investigation and the shipment's arrest finally he managed to kill three more patients and one of these was Kathleen Bundy who he forged her, her will for him and his wife to secure all the assets and he also stole jewellery that belonged to Kathleen. But the thing is with Kathleen was she was a very strong, active, quite well 80 year old lady and then she just literally just dropped dead in her chair no actually she wasn't in her usual chair she was on the sofa and her family thought this very very strange like how does a woman just suddenly die and not sit in her usual place in her own home yeah the suspicions again arising and several months later a taxi driver in Hyde had contacted the police informing them that he suspected Shipman of murdering 21 of his patients. Shipman's trial was held at Preston Crown Court and it started on the 5th of October 1999 and he was charged with the murders of Marie West, Irene Turner, I'm reading these off the list, Lizzie Adams, Jean Lilly, Ivy Lomas, Muriel Grimshaw, Marie Quinn, Kathleen Wagstaff, Bianca Pomfret, Nora Nuttall, Pamela Hillier, Maureen Ward, Winifred Miller, John Melia and Kathleen Grundy. I said Bundy before, I'm sorry, it's Grundy. And he killed all his patients by injections of dimorphine or between 1995 and 1998. His legal representation had tried but failed to have the Grundy case where a clear motive was alleged tried separately from the others where no motive was apparent. On 31st January 2000, after six days of deliberation, the jury found Shipman guilty of 15 counts of murder and one count of forgery. On 11th of February 2000, just 10 days after his conviction, the General Medical Council formally struck shipment of its register. Yes! Why didn't they do that earlier? You know, the scandal with his drug addiction and then the forgery as well as the drugs. And then the police didn't find, you know, because of the having inexperienced 
police officers. Dr. Harold Simon is the only doctor in the history of British medicine found guilty of murdering his patients. John Bodkin Adams was charged in 1957 with murdering a patient amid rumours he had killed dozens more over a 10 year period and possibly provided the role model for Harold Shipman. He was acquitted. Historian Pamela Cullen has argued that because of Adams' acquittal, there was no impetus to examine the flaws in the British system until the Shipman case. Shipman hanged himself in his cell at Wakefield Prison on the 13th of January 2004 on the eve of his 58th birthday. Some of the victims' families felt that they were cheated as his suicide meant they would never have the satisfaction of Shipman's confession, no answers to why he committed his crimes. The Home Secretary at the time, David Blunkett, noted that celebration was tempting, saying, you wake up and you receive a call telling you Shipman has topped himself. And you think, is it too early to open a bottle? And then you discover that everybody was very upset that he has done it. Wow. Shipman's motive for suicide was never established, though he reportedly told his probation officer that he was considering suicide to ensure his wife's financial security after he was stripped of his NHS pension. And Primrose received the full NHS pension and she would not have been entitled to it for if he has stayed alive past 60. Primrose continued to stay by her husband's side and protest his innocence despite overwhelming evidence against him. Now if you want to know more about this case, about Shipman, then have a read at the Shipman Inquiry report. And this led to changes in the standard medical procedures with how things were born, like there is no one, one doctor surgeries anymore. Things were just a lot harder, more difficult for these things to happen again. And doctors were watched a lot more closely. So yeah, do check out the Shipman Inquiry report as you will find out lots and lots more information. If I was to talk about that here now, I would probably be here for the rest of the day. And I'm sure you, you wouldn't want to stay around for that long. So yeah, go and have a read in your own time. Let me know what you think. Like, do, do you know of any doctors who have killed the patients? The Dr. Howard Shipman is estimated to have killed over 250 patients throughout his entire career. The questions that I'd like to ask, was he murdering his patients because they weren't his mother? Was he killing them over and over again? Well, her mother, his mother. Or bringing his dear mother back to life again by mimicking that vividly particular moment of his past. You know, did, did he have one child by proxy? Or was he just plain evil? You know, did he think he was doing the patients a favour because they were elderly and he wanted to give them, you know, dignity as they died? What like I say, was he evil? And it just doesn't seem to be any motive. Apart from the last one, you know, with Kathleen Grundy, you know, with the forgery and the stolen jewellery. It was such a horrific, like, I remember it quite clearly. I was shocked. I had seen doctors chronically because of my health. And these are the people you're supposed to trust. You know, these elderly ladies let this man in into their home who they trusted with all their heart and soul expecting him to help them, but instead he did the opposite and it's just like, what? Why? Why? Anyway, I am going to go. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video 
and don't forget to give it a big thumbs up click on the like down below and don't forget to share so that your friends and your family your colleagues can learn about dr howard shipman if they don't know about him and they want to learn more and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to my channel take care guys and i'll see you in my next video bye for now bye